Hey guys, just Moto Frogger coming here with the first vlog. Just want to do a vlog uh, review on the Ducati 2014 Ducati 1199 Panangali um, here down at Williamstown Beach in Australia. Uh, this is a bike here. Uh, I've owned it for about six months, I put about 9,000 Ks on it. Uh, just going through today basically the good things and the bad things. Uh, I'll be comparing it to sort of other the other leader bikes like the s 1000 R, RSV4, comparing them how it compares to that, why I bought it and uh, the things I don't like about it. There's uh, a couple of things that I'm not too happy with it but uh, yeah I'll get into it. Um, I'll just be taking it easy as you can see I've got a brand new set of Pirellis on it I uh, just put on yesterday so I really got to take it easy. Um, yeah it's still a bit slippery but we'll give it a quick spurt down down the road here and we'll go through um, yeah the review of the bike. Um, basically be talking about the things that I the things that I like about the bike. Um, obviously it's a sport bike, it's one of the new uh, 2014 models so it's got a ton of power and uh, really good torque. How it compares to the 2011 1198, um, it's not as much low down torque. It, it is true what everyone says, it hasn't got that low down torque that the Panangali, uh, the 1198, uh, 1098, the 1198 and the 1098 had. Um, it is it is quite not sluggish um, compared to other leader bikes, compared to the S1000 double R, it's definitely a lot quicker down low. Uh, it's a lot a lot more punch down low, it's um, yeah, definitely a good, good punch down low, whereas the s 1000 R, I think in all inline fours, they like, they're almost like a wind in engine, it has to wind up with a power, whereas the L twin on this engine, just, yeah, it's just really good, good torque down low, not as crazy as the uh, 1198, but still, uh, plenty of torque to get the front wheel up near in first and second gear to nearly any revs and then the thing that this has over the 1198 is it's the top end rush now it's got the top end rush of a, a good inline four now by a good inline four I mean I've, I test I'm comparing this to the S1000 double R because that's the bike that everyone rates very highly and um, the other bike we compare it to is that really RSV4 which I also test rode now this bike is very, very quick up top. Um, so the S1000 double R is quicker up top. It is a, it is a little bit more scary up top. But it's not scary because all the power is up top. So you, you're really going quick by the time you get it. Whereas the Ducati scares you more on a day-to-day -day ride. Um, and that's the reason I bought it. Is like the looks of it. I, I, I still think it's the nicest looking sports bike there is. Um, I don't really know. I don't think there's another. I do like the RSV4 but um, yeah the Panangali has it. Uh, speed bump here. Panangali has it for me for looks. Um, the other thing that is ridiculous on this bike is its brakes. It is you, oh, my previous bike was the K6 GSXR 1000, which brilliant engine, and still, even today, it's still it's, everyone raves on about how good of an engine that bike had. Um, which it was a, a, a lot like their 1000 Double R, that inline four, up top power, um, really winds in and really gets exciting up top in your rev range when you start revving it out. Uh, the, the, it didn't have strong brakes, whereas this has got the. Um, Brembo monoblock, some of their best brakes on it, and it is the brakes are scary. Like you just, I'll uh, see if I can do a sort of demonstration here. It's just, and you just see, it is, it is like it's forcing me right up into the front of the seat. It is brakes are really. really Yeah, I suppose um, they're the good things. Uh, everyone raves on about the power, everything like that, about the Ducati, the looks, the sound it makes. I I don't know how well it's coming across through the microphone. I don't know how 
well it's portrayed through this but the sound of it is just it is oh, unbelievable um, a lot of people don't like the sound of twins on motorbikes um, I I was never a fan of them I had the Jigster as I said I was a big inline 4 fan I love the sound of the BMWs but oh, the this when you're up high in the rev range you just nothing can beat it for sound like the rsv4 wrote that that was a very nice sounding bike stock the 2015 s1000rr is a nice sounding bike but the distinct note and the distinct sound that the a ducati makes uh, sort of gone with them taking away the dry clutch and going to a wet clutch but it is a yeah brilliant brilliant sounding bike uh, now I suppose if everyone wants to sort of know about the bad things, everyone, everyone sort of, there's a lot of good things about this bike. Um, I suppose the common fault and the biggest problem I have with the bike is the, is the, not the heat coming off the bike, but I'm sitting right on top of one of a cylinder head. So where the, my legs sit on, I'll put a picture up now so you can see it, and I'll circle the, the bolts that I'm talking about. When you sit down, your thighs are right up against these bolts. And if you're riding in anything other than leathers, you will have burns on your legs if you ride for more than an hour. I've got some pretty, pretty, sick, pretty wicked burns on my legs from. Oh, there we go. That's the mud. Um, I've got some pretty, pretty nice burns on my legs from uh, this bike. So that's that's my biggest problem with this bike. Um, the other problem, obviously, Ducati Super Sport bike. Is this seat is the probably one of the most uncomfortable seats I've ever ridden on a bike. Um, as I said, I've ridden other sports bikes. I've ridden a uh, ZX10. I've ridden uh, the GSX-R1000, obviously. Or I've had uh, ridden the RSV4. I've ridden the BMW, the 2014 S1000RR. And the seat on this is it's just it's so firm. There's no padding. It's 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 really really. You get, you get really sore after a while and um, where I live I have to ride about two hour, an hour and a half to get to any good roads so by the time I get to any twisty roads I'm quite sore as it is um, yeah so that's, that's another another bad thing about the Ducati um, uh, other bad things it's got it does it does have a very like with the twin it's got a very sensitive sensitive throttle but I think that's new riders who come on the bike oh sensitive throttle like first gear around corners like just then you have to be very very cautious you just can't wrap it on um like you used to on your smaller bikes like i came uh coming from an inch 250 if i ever ride a not so powerful bike i would be careful of how you deliver the power around low speeds but you do get used to it it's not one of those um yeah i've yeah, I wouldn't really recommend this bike as a commuter. It's I only use it on on weekends and on a nice day like today where I want to go go for a ride. It is a um, it's a weekend bike. It's not it's not a commuter. It's not like the S1000R where it's got a, a comfy seat, heated grips, cruise control on the new 2015 model, and you could use that bike as a commuter. Um, I wouldn't be using a Ducati as a commuter. It it goes through tires very quickly. It um uncomfortable, hot, uh yeah, it's just it's not a commuting bike, it's a track bike and that's why I bought it. I wanted something that I'd be able to get up get on a weekend, ride it and it would put a smile on my face. And although the BMW was a great bike, it it, it excited me, it just it didn't excite me like the Ducati did. I I took the BMW when I took it for test ride, I took it out for three hours. Rode it for three hours, came the absolute hell out of it. Um, I had that thing, oh, yeah, down freeways I was doing well, well past, well double the speed limit here in Australia. Uh, I was, yeah, I really, really gave it to it. Um, but it doesn't, just doesn't excite me. It didn't excite me. I, I hopped on the Panigale and I was only allowed by Ducati, I was only allowed a, a test ride that then. Approximately 20 minutes I had on the bike, so yeah, I was 20 minutes on the bike, and it was enough. I was I only rode it in the city, 
I didn't probably get it. I didn't get it above 80 kilometers an hour, but the I looked at the bike. I love the looks of it. I love the symmetry. I love if one thing Italians know how to do. They make beautiful, beautiful bikes. Um, it's yeah. Oh, it's just such. In my opinion, such a nice looking bike and the sound and everything. I, I just I fell in love with it. I just I knew it was a bike for me. Uh, so yeah, to, uh, had the deposit down on the BMW and um, yeah, I took got rid, got my deposit back and I said I'm sorry, I just found a uh, gone to the Panigale. Um, oh, speaking of, I've been using the quick shifter. I don't know if being able to see with my hand positioning is. I thought. I'll do one now to show you just how the quick shift on this is actually really smooth so that's not full throttle so it, it, they say you should be on full throttle but the quick shifter on this bike is so smooth I can be just a quarter throttle and up through the gears and it's just it goes through it no, no problems it's it's one of the nicest nicest things I've gone from upgrading a bike is the quick shifter it's um Highly recommend if anyone buys it, buying a new bike, look for one of the bikes with a quick shifter. Comparing it to the other bikes with a quick shifter, um, I actually didn't find the BMWs as smooth. The SLRR, the quick shifter on that bike, I I have been told it could have just been that bike because they were meant to be ridiculously smooth. I have uh, a 675R. I've ridden that very briefly, and I didn't like the quick shifter at all on it. I don't know. Again, if it was that bike, but it was very, very touch and go. It was uh, a lot worse than the Ducati at low revs. Like, I'm only doing 4,000 revs, and it's, it's just going through it so nicely. It just goes up, bang, up, bang. It's not the quick shift for that song. It's the, the L-twin that makes it a little jerky, because it's a, a jerky engine than the 4, but the quick shift that works so well on this bike. Um, yeah. I can't really... I can't really fault much else with the bike other than the, really the, the ergonomics of it. The, the seat and the heat that comes from this bike is just, it, it, it does not ruin your riding experience, but I wouldn't be using it for long trips. I mean, the longest trip I do is probably a uh, non-stop, it's about two and a half, I've ever done is two and a half hours, and you're sore by the, after, the, after it. If you've been riding all day, like when we go out and go do a twisty run, I'm going to turn around because the sun is going to be right in your eyes here. Yeah, it's going to be bumpy. Alright, so we'll go use the quick shifter again. And as I said, I'm, I'm barely, uh, barely up in here. That's the one thing I can't understand with these uh, Italians. I, I love spamming the indicator thing when I'm riding, I like pressing it, but on the Ducati when you press the indicator, it goes into your riding mode and it still does have your speed on there, but you lose, it just distracts you, it's um, I wish they had another button, they've got so many buttons or places for buttons, I wish they just had another button to change your mode, rather than, oh Ducati, got to be so compact, got to save weight, we can only have one button, it's ridiculous. It just it, that 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 does frustrate me quite a quite a bit when you're riding and you press the button to, and you think you're off the indicator. I mean, oh, it does annoy me. Um, hopefully, it's, the audio's been good. It's a good quality picture. I'm running 1080p, six, uh, 36 frames per second on a GoPro 3 Hero Plus. Um, so I do hope that it's. Ks and it still excites me that sound. Still, uh, still love it. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'll get bored of this bike compared to the other ones. Um, yeah, so I'd really like to do a lot of top end or bike comparisons of all the different sport bikes there are out there. I mean. Yeah. Uh, basically my vlog done 